Uh, to create a console application, I click on File, New, Project. I throw out the Okay, one thing I mentioned in class, when I talk, nobody else does, okay? Please do so. That's, if you, are, if, you, if you have something to share and you think there's something that needs clarification, believe me, 15 other people need this exact same thing. Just ask the question and I'll go through it. I know I gave you the test, the quiz thingy, and that distracts everyone. That's why I don't do it at the beginning of the class, ever. I did it, it's a mistake, but my apologies. All right, <clears throat> one more time. So. File, new project, and then we have several different types of things that you can actually create over here. We use uh, Visual C++, we select Windows Desktop, Windows Desktop Wizard, and no other way of creating, and that's how it's supposed to be. Sorry. First thing that you do is you make sure that cre uh, create a directory for solution, it's uh, um, unchecked. Then you browse and uh, uh, you, you find the place that, that you want to um, create your direct, uh, create your uh, project. For me, it's going to be in the repository for section I. So I'm going to select the folder. This is the second lecture over here. I'm going to put 02 and it's, uh, it's May 15th. So that's what you're going to see, 02 May 15th. Then you click on OK. You make sure everything's unchecked other than empty project. You click on OK. And three years later, you are going to have an empty console application. OK? The console application. And then after uh, the empty console application comes, close everything other than Solution Explorer because they're just eating the resources of your computer. You don't want them open. Any extra windows that you have open, they're doing something. Close them. OK? <coughs> Right-click on source files when you want to start something new, but if you don't want, you just click on VCX Proj and you open the whole thing the way it was. A new item, uh, use code C++, and make sure you put C so the compiler is actually C, not C++. I'm going to put prg.c. That's the program that I want to begin um, with. Make sure at the top of your C code, you always have Define CRT secure, no warnings. It guarantees that no warnings and compile errors are going to happen for those functions who are considered unsecure with newer versions of C++. And then include standard input output library to uh, have the input output functions available for our program. Then we write the first function. We set C as language of functions, which means you write so many different functions to perform one single task. So many different functions to perform one single task. And all those functions, uh, to, to perform one uh, solution, to, to solve one solution, to implement one program, so many different functions. C needs to know where to begin. Because of that, there is one and one function that the name is hard-coded into C compiler. And that function name is called main. Any function that you write, that's not a main, that's a main. Have parentheses in front of it, that's the entry point of function that receives data from another function. Not from the user, not from outside. If there are 50 functions, one function can put information in another function by passing it through the uh, parentheses, exactly like math, right? Y is equal to F3, okay? And 3 goes into the X, and then you say, I hate the math. Thing. It's the same thing over here. So I actually pass it through this one. Main doesn't accept anything from anyone because it's the beginning of everything. Because of that fact, we're going to put void over here. And then main returns an integer. To whom? We don't care, but it does. And then that return integer for us, for the whole thing, is always zero. Why? Because the sky is high. This thing that you see is essentially when you want to write nothing, you write this first. Okay? So that means a program that does nothing. All right? And that's where everything begins. I can actually compile and run this program. So how do I compile? I'll uh, either control F5 or you can, I can go debug, start without debugging. Go to debug menu and start without debugging, and the result's going to be this. It executes it, and nothing happens. 
because I didn't do anything, right? Any questions down to you? Yes. Always. Always. Always integer. Nothing but integer. And could it be float? No. <laughs> no. Only int. Nothing but int. That's how it is. That's how main is designed. <clears throat> Who calls main? Anybody tell me? It's chicken and the egg. I said that it's a... Remember that last time when we were talking about... When we were talking about computers, we said that computers run... Um, uh, when computers start, it goes to BIOS and then goes to hard drive to pick up what? Oh, I can't put that in the, the operating system. Thank you. The operating system. So it loads the operating system. An operating system is the system that operates the computer. I don't need to put any abbreviation for it. The name comes with it. It's the system that operates the computer. So essentially, any program that runs is ran by operating system, correct? Now, when your program runs, who calls the main? The operating system. It's the operating system that calls the main. So when you, when you create your program, it becomes an icon on a computer. You double click on that icon, the main of that icon is being called. So everything can begin. So everything can begin. Are we OK with this? All right. Therefore, that int that you see is the value that main returns to the operating system. OK? Why does it return something to operating system? Just to tell operating system how things ended. It doesn't mean anything. You can return 55. And operating system doesn't do anything with it. It just makes it available for anyone who wants to know. Why? Because many programs that are written, they are very sneaky. They run behind the scene. They don't have any user interface. They are just running. You don't know if they are running, but they are running. Like those programs, when they end, somehow you want to know how they end, right? So you ask the operating system, what, the, what was the code that the program returned? It, it says it returned 5,962. Then you're going to open the manual of the program, see what is 500. What was the number that I just said? 5,000? <laughs> okay, 562. <laughs> Let's say then you open the manual and say, oh, that means file not found. That means successfully ended. That means... Okay, so it doesn't mean anything, but the only, remember that I told you no news is good news in command line, out the, that's why it is, when you put zero, it means nothing special happened, life is beautiful, take it easy, okay, that's why we, we always return zero, are we okay? So that's that. Um, As we mentioned, Earth got cold, dinosaurs came, ate too much, died, and then the programmers came and started writing programs on computers, right? But there was no computer. They had to create one computer first. To create the computer, they had to have them, they, they wanted to have a machine to be able to remember the state of things. For you to be able to do something, you have to remember. If you can't remember, you can't do anything. I can't even tell you what's going to happen to you if you can't remember. You simply cease to exist. Think about it for a second. At the moment that you want to do something, you just forget what happened. <laughs> okay? So you literally you can't function, right? Think about it for a second. If you didn't have memory, I'm not talking about long-term memory that you're trying to put something, you know, in it right now and learn something to do. So not that. Like if you want to do, you pick up a spoon and you forgot that you pick up, picked up the spoon. You need memory to do things, correct? Are we okay with this? Okay. So they, need to, they needed to build something to be able to remember the state of things. How do we remember the state of things? How can I do that? I always tell to my students, and I'm going to tell you now, when you're coming down to the office, take a look at the light. If the light is on, it means I'm in. If the light is off, it means either I'm not in or I'm busy. I turn the light off, so don't bother me. So just, you don't need to walk all the way through. Just do like that. Light is on, far that's in. I'm going to go ask a question. Are we okay with this? How many states I, did I have with this light thingy? Two, right? So 
a light, a switch, that is the most easy thing, the easiest thing that you can light. It's, uh, anybody have problem with lights going on and off? Anyone? So if I turn it off and on, two states, right? So I can actually put two different positions. Day, night, good, bad, hungry, full, I don't know, tired, okay, sick, well, right? Two different types of things, and I can mention. Now, <laughs> in mathematics, they say, okay, two things, I'm going to put zero and one, okay? Zero and one. So they put the switch, and they put zero and one, and life is beautiful. Now I can actually count to one. Zero, one, yay. Okay, that wasn't enough. What they wanted to do was, was to be able to create something so they can remember, so they can remember letters, so they can keep documents. That's what they wanted to do with the computers. And write programs and do things like that. So they said, how many things we have at the time? English was the only thing that was in concern because people were doing it, or English speakers. So they said, English, how many things? How many different things? How many different? If I want to tag them with numbers, how far should I go in English language? Anybody knows how many I have in an English alphabet? 20, how many? 26? Good. I didn't know. <laughs> 26. Okay, so if it's two, it's like 52, right? So because lowercase and uppercase, and we have punctuation, stuff like that, goes up to 60 something, and then I don't know, line dashes and all those things, it goes around 70 something. Okay, 70, 80, kill yourself, it's going to be 120, right? So they said, I need at least 120 something different, 120 numbers to be able to keep, keep, be, to keep it in something. Um, so if I have a single switch, I can only show a zero and one, right? If I put two switches together, how many different things I can show? Zero, one, two, three, correct? So I can do zero, one, two, three. How many different positions? Four, right? If I put three, the other time I put three like this and I started counting and a, a very bad sign came up. So <laughs> this time I'm going to do that. <laughs> three. If I do three like this, then what's going to happen? I'm going to have nothing, okay? And then I'm going to have zero, one, right? And then it goes to two and then three and then goes four, right? And then <laughs> five, right? And then six and then, and it keeps going up like that. So, so. I can have up to eight, right? Up to seven. And if I have four, how many I can show? 16, two to power four. If I have five, 32. If I have six, 64. I'm getting close. If I have, what was the next? How many did I do? I did five? Okay. <laughs> Three was eight, four, 16, five, 32, six, Seven, done. Well, I said 120, right? So 127 is enough. That's enough for me to actually start tagging so I can actually go from zero up to 127. So that's enough. I can code it. And they started that way. Then they looked at the, the damn thing. They saw they have, they have seven switches. They saw they have seven switches. And the seven switches they have is something like, wow, that's too small. Um, seven switches. So let's say seven switches. That's one. What's going on here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven switches, right? Correct? Now they said, okay, if I want to tell you first half, which one I should choose? The first three or first four? That doesn't make sense. It's not symmetric, right? They said, the heck with it. Now that we are designing it, I'm going to add one more. I know it's extra, but hey, let's do it. So we're going to have two equal parts, right? So they added another one, and it became eight. And that's where eight bits in a byte is coming from, okay? Uh, now, good luck putting that thing back up there to have a, 
Okay, I can't do that. Anyway, so it's going to be 8. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay? And if it's 8, then how many different positions I can show? 256. 0 to? 55. Up to 255, right? Are we okay with this? All right. Again, remember, how many fingers? Why you are thinking? I say, how many people? Let me think. Ah, <laughs> oh, gosh. Every year I have something new happening. Okay, I've never had people thinking about how many fingers I have. <laughs> you know, let me think. <laughs> Anyways, 10, just if you don't know. 10. How many fingers? 10, starting from 0, going up to? 9. nine. What? 9, right? Anybody said 10? No, I don't have 11 fingers. I guarantee that. It's 10. Yeah. Anyways, so are we okay down to here? All right. So that's how it happened. And that's what a byte is. Okay? So a byte is essentially uh, a package that can hold a, a number in it. This number is essentially what we call an integral number, an integer number. An integer number is a number that cannot have any partial parts. I cannot hold in this thing 2.5. It can't happen. As a matter of fact, holding 2.5 in, in computer is a very expensive thing. They actually, a long time ago in Galaxy, far, far away, when I was just starting computer thing, you, you buy a computer, the computer had a CPU. And if you wanted the computer to do fast calculations with real numbers that had partials, you actually bought another chip called the coprocessor. You put the coprocessor on your motherboard, and it would go faster, and it could go up to 2 megahertz. <laughs> what is the speed of your computer now? I, I bet you don't even know. 2.5. Gigahertz, right? OK. When I say megahertz, I really mean I actually had a computer that I would actually go DIR and like the science fiction movies, have you seen? I don't know why the computers are so slow in this thing, science fiction. You actually see the thing goes like that? Which computer goes like that? I actually had that computer. I think it was from Hungary or something. Anyways, so what I mean is that, what I mean is that uh, it just happened like this. The, everything is designed and started like that. And these coprocessors helped uh, real numbers to get calculated. To, for a real number to get actually stored in a computer, they actually have two pieces. They use scientific notation for it. You, anybody remembers what scientific notation is for a real number? No? Mm. Okay. Uh, I didn't mention this in the other class, so I hope you they watch this video. Um, so a scientific notation looks like this. When you put, put over here 1, 2, 3, point, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay? If they want to put this thing in a scientific notation, they say, OK, if I want to have this, first I need to keep, OK, forget about it. I better not even mention it. I don't want to go into details. You need two integers to hold it. One is going to be the partial part, and the other part is going to be uh, 10 to power of minus whatever that you got. So it's essentially what you have in, a, in scientific notation is two integers to be able to hold the value of one number. And you have to keep doing the math to be able to hold the values. I don't want to go into details of how it's kept because it's not the subject of our, of our course. And, and I'm kind of deviating of what I want to say. But uh, uh, it is impossible. If I have an integer in a computer, and I put in it 2.65, what's going to go in it? 2. 65 will be ignored. If I have, a, if I have an, an integer and I want to put in it 2.9999999999, what's going to go in it? 2. It doesn't care. It doesn't round it. It, doesn't, it can just see the, 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 the whole part of it. The partial part doesn't go in it. OK? And these are the integers that we were talking about. So the smallest integer that got ever created was a byte. So when 
when we are writing a program, how do we actually show these things, this integer numbers? If I want to write a program, how do I show a number, a literal number? If I want to put 25 over there, how do I do it? Nothing. You write 25, okay? 2, 5, okay? So if I actually write 2, 5, computer knows that's 25, okay? Not a computer, the compiler, the C language knows that's 25, okay? But geeks programming, they need to know what is the content of a, of a byte, correct? When they want to point out what the content of a byte is, they had to refer to these values, and it was very difficult for them to go through it. So if the number was 1011 and then 1100, they had to actually go one by one, it says one multiplied by, and they find out what is the value of this one and that one, and then find the base, you know, uh, uh, the value of base 10 of this thing to see what's the content, and it's very difficult. They said we need a quick way so we don't have to use our brain too much to be able to quickly write the content of a byte in an efficient way. Uh, they said, okay, I can divide it by two and I have four digits in each side, right? The digits of uh, nature for us, the base is 10. Anybody knows why? Because we have 10 fingers. Just assume we had eight fingers in, one, in each hand. What would have happened? <laughs> we would look very, very awkward. Just imagine eight fingers. <laughs> but, but, but what I'm saying is that if we had it that way, like right now I can, if the base right now is 10, correct? Do we have, do we have a digit called 10? Any base doesn't have that digit in it. Correct? Base 10 doesn't have 10 in it. If means I go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, then I'm going to put 1 and a 0, and then I continue. If we had, if we look at this one, that's four digits. How many different positions four digits can show? 16, correct? So they said, let's create a digit that can go up to, from 0 up to 15. So we can actually set it. To do that, they say we start from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I want to go up to 16, right? What do I do after? I'll start, use the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F. And then it goes 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, 1, 7, 1, 8, 1, 9, 1, A, 1, B, 1, C, 1, D, 1, E, 1, F, 2, 0. To one, two, two, you don't want me to count, right? So that's what, again, I say two, one, I don't say 21, because 21 means two tens and a one. But two, one in hexadecimal means two sixteens and a one. Essentially, it's 33. Two, one in hexadecimal is 33. Two, one in decimal is two, one, it's 21. Now, if we had four fingers in each hand, then we would have go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 1, 0, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, 1, 7, 2, 0, right? So 21 in base 8 will be what? 17, because you have two 8s and a 1, correct? So this is how do we show these things? Because they wanted to do this in, in, in a program, uh, they'll be able to set something, set a pattern quickly and easily, they did it that way. So, so how do they do it? They said, if you want regular, just good old integers, base 10, put 25, that's 2, 5, life is beautiful. If you want it to be base 8, start the number with a 0. So in mathematics, 0, 2, 1 is 21, correct? In C, 0, 2, 1, that's 12. 0, 2, 1 is essentially 2, 1 in base 8. That means 17. You have no idea. The first bug of my life when I was writing a C program was that, because I was an idiot. 
Why? I had a three-digit word, a three-digit number that it couldn't have. It was from zero to nine nine nine. And just to write it neatly, I said, I'm going to write zero zero one instead of zero. Write it cool. And I didn't know that when I write zero, it becomes base eight. So I had something like that, and I would run the thing, and why the damn thing is going up to 17? And I wanted 21, and I kept doing it. I want to, finally, I had to actually read the book, and when I read it, it was base eight, and I wanted to beat myself with a baseball bat, and did it like this, and that hair gone, and the reason is that. Anyway, so, so 21 is that, so remember that. Now, if you want to actually go base 16, then you go 0x21. Now, 0x21, it means two 16s and a 1. Are you going to use this in IPC 144? I think not, but it's good to know, okay? I don't know if any place we're going to have this, but it's good to know, all right? Because, I've, because that stupid thing I did myself, I don't want anybody else to fall in the same trap as I did. So remember, hex, oct, decimal. All right? Are we okay? Are we okay one? Are we okay? Two. Sold. Pause. So, <clears throat> we said that <clears throat> um, bytes are essentially created to, created having letters of alphabet in mind. Um, but, they have nothing to do with letters of alphabet other than they, they're tagging them, right? Say, um, again, like number 65. Does that mean anything to you? It's 65. But if you look at it as in, in the ASCII code, it actually means the letter A. 97. Doesn't mean anything. But if you look at it as a character, it's lowercase a. So what they have done, because they could not, you cannot put A in the computer, like shape of A. There is no such thing. There is no such thing as shape of A. You're literally asking your computer to print the shape number 65. And the shape number 65 happens to be, as a standard, the letter A. Where do these standard we can find, where do we, where can we find these standards? ASCII table. ASCII table is where, is where we want to be, where we can find this. Look at the ASCII table. There you go, first one. <clears throat> Look at this, and that's what it is. Start from zero. Zero is code of any, nothing. Zero is the code that is not set for any character. You'll find out soon why, what good that does for us. But zero is the only thing that is code of nothing. Okay? Then it starts from, and it goes up to 127. You see that? And that's del, the delete key that you put. That's that one. And zero is 48. 1 is 49, so when I say 0, the character, the oval thing that you draw as a 0, that has an ASCII code that is 48, right? And what are these? These are actually the hexadecimal values of that. So 48 is actually 3, 0, or 6, 0 in, in oct, right? Are we okay with this? Um, keep that in mind. Back to the programming view of it, to be able to do anything, we said we need memory. We need to be able to keep these numbers somewhere so we can do something with it. The place that we can hold these numbers in is called, they are called variables. Now, this, in this case, is designed to hold orange juice, right? And that one is designed to hold coffee. So that's a coffee mug. This is a, let's call this a mug, orange juice mug, right? So they are both containers, but they are containing different things. Do we agree with that? So we can have container for different things? <clears throat> in computer science, in, in C language, 
we have two major types of containers, okay? Either containers that hold, hold whole numbers, integrals, integers, or containers who are capable of holding real numbers, 1.569, okay? 32.96. These two containers are systematically different, okay? In these two categories, the integers are divided into several different subcategories with respect to their size. We already know what is the smallest size of an integer variable that we can have. What is the smallest size? It's a byte, correct? That's how it's designed. I cannot go smaller than byte because the smallest addressable unit of memory is a byte. Nothing smaller than that. If you want to see what is the third bit of a byte, you have to jump through hoops and do different calculations to find out. Even the computer is not aware of what is the value of a bit. A bit for a computer has a meaning when it's in a package in a byte. Got it? Okay. In C language, because to honor the fact that a byte was designed to hold the character in, smallest integer is called char. Okay? So if you want to create a variable small enough to hold a number from 0 up to 255, you need a character. All right? So character CH. 0 up to 255, right? Wrong. I lied to you. It's not like that. How many fingers? 10. 0 to? But what if I want negative numbers? Then I have to make up my, my mind. Which one of these two are supposed to be zero? Let's say this one is zero. We start from minus. minus if I start from minus four, this becomes zero. I want this one to be zero. So minus five. Minus five, minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one, zero. One, two, three, and? Four. So if I have 10 fingers, the smallest negative number is one bigger than the positive number, correct? Because I have to make up my mind where the zero goes in. This is the exact same thing. In that character, if you want to count the negatives, if you want to design it in a way to keep the negatives two, you have to go a little lower. So you have to go from minus 128 up to positive 127. Got it? So, if I want it to be all positive, it's possible to go from 0 to 255. I can ask C to do that, but we're not caring about it now. If you're just writing it like this, it means you want the positive and negatives, so it divides it by kind of 2. But negatives are always one more than positives. Are we okay? Are we okay? One, good two, yes. There is, there is no difference. He just named it ka. It's actually an int. The smallest int possible, they called it a ka because the design of it was gone through finding a code for a character. That's, that's all. So ka essentially in C language means byte. Are we okay? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? This is an important moment of your life, knowing this fact. Because lots of C classes, C things, start and they call that the character. You can hold the character in that variable, A, B, C, D. No, you can hold an integer. That integer is designed to be big enough to hold the ASCII code of a character. Okay, shape of A is not in there. The, character, the number 65 is in there. Okay, are we okay? All right. Now, they said 128 is no number. I want bigger numbers. So what if I put two bytes together? Then how many bits I'm going to have? 16. 16. And therefore, the number is going to go up to positive 32,000 and something and negative 32,000 and something. Two bytes, they call it a short integer. So a short integer can go up to 
2000 and something, go look at the, coat and the, the stuff on the, in the book. It's there, okay? And minus 32,768 something, I don't know. Okay, and then they said, that's not big enough. What if I double the size and make that one four bytes? That is how many bits? 32 bits, which means that's a regular integer. A regular integer can go up to 2 billion and minus 2 billion. Okay? Are we okay down to here? Now, for some reason that you can go watch the video of the other class because one of the students actually insisted to, to tell why. We have another one called long. You expect long integer to actually be eight bytes, but it's not, it's four. So long and int are the same. They're both four, okay? <clears throat> but then they added one more, eight bytes, and then that eight byte thing is called long, long. If you want 16 bytes, then what do you write? Long, long, no, I'm joking, it's just, that's it. <laughs> You're right, very long, long, no, that's it, that's the end. So eight bytes, that's it, you cannot go bigger than that. Bigger than that, then you have to do the math. You have to write a function that does that for you. Put two longs, longs together and do some astronomical thingy if you want to have big numbers that big, okay? Pardon me? Int and long are the same. Are the same. They're, they're same. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's always someone who's not comfortable with that. One person, yes. Thirty-two. Yeah, that's eight bytes. Eight multiplied by eight. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. That's sixty-four. All right. All right. So eight bytes. That's sixty-four bits, right? Yes. Uh, <laughs> what, what's the point of having two of them? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, when computers got created, uh, the CPU, okay, the, the standard number for a CPU, the registers inside the CPU, you know what a register is, we talked about it, right? Yeah. Register inside the CPU was a 16 bit register. So when they created the C language, they said, whatever int is, that's the standard size of an integer inside the, the CPU. At that time, int was two bytes. Then the 32-bit processors came out. And the 32-bit compilers came out. And that's when int became 32. Therefore, the same size as long. Okay? Let's just stop it that way. Okay, so because our compiler is a 32, int and long are the same. That's my explanation for it. Lie or truth, just accept it, okay? But that's the reason, okay? So, uh, I don't know, let's put it that way. Okay, I don't wanna go deeper than that, all right? Okay, so for now, just know that long and int are the same, but, but they are not the same, which means they are still different types. So compiler, for compiler, int is of type int, that is 32. Long is of type long, that is 32 bits. Okay? If that makes any sense. The types are different, but the values they can hold is the same. Okay? It's like having two different colors for a coffee cup. Okay? All right. And then came the... Floating point numbers. For floating point numbers, they started calling it float. And float numbers, they go up to certain precision, okay? Floating point numbers can be very big. Two to power 20, 10 to power 27, I think. I don't know. You have it over there, don't you? You're looking at how big the floating point number can be? Float 37, okay? 10 to power 37, okay? It means one 37 zeros in front of it, very big. But the problem is that with that, 
gigantic thing comes lack of precision. The bigger the number, like from here to sun, if you want to calculate what is the distance, okay? If you put it in centimeters, <laughs> you know, come on, right? So, so you, you gotta, you gotta, like, you're gonna have to cut the thing a little, I mean, like, make the precision a little lower than that when you're going to such big distances. And that's what floating points do. Floating point numbers are never precise. They have a precision. So to speak, let's say the precision of a floating point is to have, say, four digits after the decimal point. So 1.2345. Then after that, it's going to get ignored. So if you go any deeper than that, okay? If you don't know why, go read the scientific notation and see why, why a scientific notation is, and you'll find out, okay? Then they said, <clears throat> but that's not precise enough. I want to make that more precise. So let's say, like, let's make the precision double. Let's double the precision of float. So instead of having, say, four digits after the decimal point, let's have 12 digits after the decimal point, so to speak. Don't quote me on that, okay? The number of decimals after the, the uh, numbers after the decimal point uh, uh, may not be exactly what I'm saying. So double, if you go 12 digits after the decimal point, or six digits after the decimal point, whatever it is, then it's going to lose its value. It's going to get ignored, okay? And that's double. Then they said, that's not precise enough. I'm still losing a little bit of information that I don't want to. Let's make it poor. Let's double that precision. And they call that, they wanted to call it double double, but Tim Horton sued them. So, so they called them long double, OK? So long double. Long double is double the precision of a long, OK? But still, it's not precise. What I mean is that you write a logic, a very simple logic, and you follow two variables that they are both doubles. And when you're doing it on paper, they both end up to be 2.5. OK? And then you put them in comparison in the computer, and the computer fails to, to announce them as equal. Computer tells them these two are not equal. But when you do it on a, on a thing, they are both 2.5. Because they are not precise, one is 2.5, and the other one is 2.4999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
That's why precise calculations are usually done through integers. Okay? Because that's precise. You know exactly what it is. Okay? Um, but again, supercomputers that are doing calculations for very distant trajectories and things like that, um, I don't know even why I'm talking about it over here, but they don't use raw values like this. They have uh, procedures written that uses 10 of these things to generate one number. So they literally create their own types. Okay, you're not going to use this for, okay. <laughs> That's very heavy math. When we got our third PhD, then we can talk about it. All right, <laughs> are we okay? All right, so next one. Uh, types.c. So I create an integer and I call it num. I can set that integer to a value. Now, assign, assignment in computer science and assignment and equal sign in mathematics are two different beings, okay? In In, in mathematics, the assignment, the equal sign, is a statement that you are making. You are saying y is equal to x plus 5. It's a statement. It's something that people listen to. That, oh, so 5 is equal to x plus 5. Thank you for letting me know. Okay? It's a statement you are making. Where in computer science, assignment is a request for an action to be done, which means... In mathematics, so I can say over here, num is set to 10. <clears throat> in mathematics, you are letting everybody know that num is 10, correct? Where in C language, you're saying, take the 10 and put it in num. Two different things. I'll tell you why. If I write this in math, they say you are nuts. In math, if you say num is num plus 1, they say, okay, that num goes off with this one, so I have 0 is equal to 1. You are nuts. Okay? In here, this is a request. I am asking to get the value of num, add 1 to it, and put it in num. Therefore, after this statement of number 6, after statement 6, num will have the value 11. Okay? And I'd actually, actually, that's the structure to count things with, by the way. If you want to count stuff, you do that. It adds one, right? It's your, you're adding one to something. Are we okay with this? So now I can say printf num is, we have done this already, right? Placeholder percent d, and in here I'm going to put num. Run the beautiful program, and three years later, Num is 11, right? All right. Operations that I can do in C language with integers are these. If I have over here, oh, by the way, you can create variables at the beginning of any block in C language. Okay? For now, the rule may change. It, it's ha it has already been changed, but it, well, I'm, not, I'm not teaching that. Okay, so because no, not many people are, are using the new C compiler. Lots of C compiler, 90% of the C compilers that we have are older ones. That's why I'm teaching you like this. Um, so at the beginning of any block, you can create a variable, any block. What is a block? Block is where you have a curly bracket opened. Okay, so when you have an open curly bracket, immediately after, you can create variables. And when the corresponding curly bracket of that reaches, that num dies, goes away. That's the rule. 
Okay? So after line 11, line 12, num is dead and it's not accessible. And this num, while it's alive, is only accessible within its own scope. What is a scope? It's curly, it's in the block that it's in. So the scope is no, of num is between line 4 and line 11 and nowhere else. All right? Are we okay with this? Now, let's create int a, 5, int b, 6. So, I can say num is set to a plus b, okay? So, addition, first thing. Then what do I have? Subtraction, multiplication, and division. Okay? So, A plus B, A minus B, A. So, <clears throat> the first one, that's what? And this one? Minus one, this one? 30, this one? 5 divided by 6? Zero, because it can't hold any partials. We don't need to even need to think about it, okay? Now, if I had 15 over, oh, look, let's make it eight, okay? Or 11, okay? Now in here, I'm gonna have 17. Now in here, I'm gonna have, now in here, I'm gonna have 66. Now in here, I'm gonna have what? One. One. Right? It's not, there's no partial parts in it. And that's how it is. Next one. Num is set to a mod B. Modulus. Remainder. So, if I divide 11 by 6, what is the remainder? What is the remainder? 5, five right? So, 5 is going to go into num. Okay? 11 divided by 6, 1. 6 minus, uh, 11 minus 6, and that's, that's 5, right? So, five. so, everybody knows that, hopefully. All right? That's modulus. This doesn't have any meaning for floating point variables. If, I've, if, the va if it was floating point, this doesn't make sense, because floating point doesn't have it. It just goes, right? So, 3 divided by 2, if it's, a digit, if it's integer, that's 1, right? If it's floating point, it's 1.5. There is no reminder, right? Remainder, right? Are we okay with this? Questions? No? All right. Now, this is as far as we went in the other class. Okay, so everything, anything goes over here. It's um, more than the other class. We have like seven more minutes. So, floating point number is the exact same thing. So, if I wanted to create actually a float number with this one, actually, let's do this and see what happens. So, in here, this printf num that I have, I'm going to put it right after every single one. Okay? And as we talked about it, these are the values. I don't need to go through it again. All right? Actually, to just make sure that people understand what's that, I don't want it to get, uh, I'm going to make this 10, control F5. Reason is that, hmm. Okay, that's fine. All right. Now, this is what I'm going to do. Int dot C. 
So I'll remove this one. And now I'm going to have over here double. Nobody uses float anymore. Okay? If we, if we ask you for a, a floating point number, by default, use the double. Okay? Because floating point is too imprecise, if, if that's the word. Okay? It's not accurate enough. Because of that, nobody uses it. Unless we actually ask you to create a float one, don't. Always use double. Okay? So double, double, and double. Now here, instead of percent %d, I'm going to use percent %lf. OK? LF stands for, for double, because it's kind of remember long float type of a thing. <laughs> it's, it's, it's double, OK? So when you want to print double, if it was float, it was percent %f. You can read it in a thing in the, um, in the, in the um, um, notes. If I run this, you will see that the, all the values are shown like this. You see that? So even when you have set value, that's what it is. Let me try something if I can. No, I'm going to run this step by step. I just want to check something, <clears throat> see how lucky I am. So I'm going to add num to watch. So down here, it's going to show the value. <clears throat> you see this value over here? 3.55, the garbage that is in it, OK? It actually says this number multiplied to 10 to power minus 307. It, that's scientific notation for it. Now, if I run this and keep going, uh, so now it became that one. So num is 10. Come on, give me a. Now, sometimes when. If you're lucky, you actually see things happening over there. Multiplication, 60. Yeah. That, so those are the number of zeros. Those are the, that's the precision of a double. One, two, three, four, five, keep going. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. All right? Uh, question down to here? All right, I just wanted to see if what, any of them are going to go 59.99999 to show you, because it happens, OK? But it didn't happen here. Um, so that's doubles. Um, what else I can talk about? Um, as you notice, the next, as you know, the next time you're coming, the questions for the quiz are going to be from week two. The week two is not covered completely. So what I said that I'm going to ask you the questions about things that I haven't taught is half and half. So half of it is done, half of it is not. Okay. So again, it, do, it doesn't mean that because I didn't teach it, the questions are not. I actually try to, I am going to try to ask questions about the parts that are not there. <clears throat> but in the two minutes that I have, actually, you know what? I'm not going to talk about it. Please go through the notes. Uh, workshop is going to be very simple. It's already up. I strongly suggest you do it before you come to lab. So in lab, you can do the at-home part. OK? Yes? You're talking about this one? Th these two? OK. <clears throat> This is something that is a little ahead of the thing. As we mentioned, wh whatever you put in a print formatted function, print f function, this is what you want to print, right? Now, within your printf, you can have placeholders. This is placeholder, which means it holds for the place of the variable that comes next. So I could actually do this. So let me just, for example, I'm going to change this printout like this. I'm going to say printf.
percent LF, percent LF plus percent LF. And in here, I'm going to put num A, B. So what happens is that what's going to get printed over here will be, this is a placeholder for the first one. This is a placeholder for the second one. This is a placeholder for the third one. So what you're going to see is that because num is A plus B, A is 10. And, um, so you're going to see exactly that. So let me just run to that so you see. Oh, that's a new version of M. <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> okay, so let's go over there. Thank you very much for seeing that. So if I just run that, this is what's going what's to get printed. What happened? Did I? Just a second. There you go. See, percent, see 16, that's 16, that is printed over here, then equal, then 10, that is A, and 6, that is B. Okay? That means new line, yeah. And to know all that, you got to read this, that I didn't have time to go through. So backslashes that you see actually mean these values. Backslash A is alarm, backspace, form, feet, new line, carriage, return, tab, vertical, tab, backslash, yada, yada, yada. Okay? Please read those things. Thank you. Have a beautiful day, and I'll see you soon.